Well, this, uh, this week, uh, as many of you may already know through the various announcements that we've made, we're going to be entering into a time that we call Seek Week. Can you say Seek Week? That's right. The word seek is a very Bible, Bible term uh, because we are uh, a people who are in need. Come on, say need. We're in need of seeking something. And no matter uh, uh, what we do in life, we will always seek something. Whether you su seek success, whether you seek uh, 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 acceptance or uh, recognition or value, uh, we all seek something because we were made to seek. But this uh, uh, message this morning is to help us align our seeking and to realize that God has made us to seek Him. We're called seekers. Come on, say, I'm a seeker. That's right. We're all seekers. And uh, we, at the beginning of the year, created a moment where together we begin to seek God at a very high level, where we begin to say, Lord, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what's happened last year, or what I want to happen this year, or what's currently going on in my life presently, I'm making a conscious decision to lay aside every distraction, to lay aside every other appetite and desire, and to begin to hone in, to begin to focus in on you. So that we can begin to, like a radio, Tune in to the God channel, hallelujah, so that we push out all the other white noise, all the other distractions, and we begin to put ourselves in a place where we can hear what God is saying for this year, so, so that we aren't fumbling around in the dark, we aren't wondering, is God up to this or up to that? No, there becomes a certainty in our spirit about what God is doing so we can cooperate with that. And we're not beginning. Sometimes people fight against God and they don't even realize they're doing it because they're not rightly aligned. When you're aligned with the will of God and the purpose of God and the plan of God, you begin to cooperate with God at a higher level. And what would normally take one year can be done in one week. I had uh, an interesting thing happen over the last uh, 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 two weeks where of all last year, I was trying to accomplish something very hard in, in an area of dealing with um, government, uh, a government department. I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, but sometimes it can be very difficult to uh, get what you need to get. Can I hear an amen? Uh, when you engage with, uh, with government legislation. And um, it, can, it requires endurance. It requires a lot of uh, consistency. Yeah? All right. And so there was this thing I've been working on. And the Lord said you know, to me, James, you can only do what you can do. But what I could do is far greater than what you can do. What God could do in a moment, hallelujah, could take you a lifetime. A lifetime of, of, of toil, of, of trying. But it's in the hand of God to give you the right person, hallelujah, at the right time with the right answer to begin to open a door that had been shut for years. I want this year to be a year like that, where God, you're so in tune, you're so aligned, you're so connected to what God's doing, you're so led by the Spirit, uh, you don't have time to mess around with doing things in your own strength, because things that are done in the flesh produce the results of the flesh, but things that are done in the Spirit produce the results, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. I want the results of the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life and for City Life Church. I don't want to toil and to sweat like Adam did to bring forth the fruit of the ground. No, Jesus became a curse for us. Hallelujah. And as, as people of God, we are not under the curse. Can I hear an amen? But we are blessed 
of the Lord. Indeed, highly favored by the Lord. But in, 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 in that truth, we must position ourselves to cooperate. Come on, say cooperate. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, uh, you need to, you need, I, I don't know about you, sometimes I press the wrong button on my radio in the car, and instead of just going to a pre-programmed channel, because sometimes my wife's car functions differently than my car does, and, and uh, uh, even to the point when, when I'm in my wife's car, it's a Japanese car, and uh, so the indicator's on the other side of the steering wheel. Do you know what I'm talking about? got into someone else's car and you thought you were going to turn on the indicators, but you turned on the windscreen wipers instead. And so there's different things about my wife's car than my car. And so when I go to the radio and I'll press this button, instead of turning it on, I'm changing the station now. And now I've gone into manual mode on the station is just, and I'm going like this to try and find the channel. And I'm searching because I don't just want any channel. I want the right channel. Hallelujah. I want Kaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're like, no way, Pastor James. No way. No, I want, I want classic FM. That's what I listen to. And uh, I, want it, I want to tune in to classic FM. Hallelujah. How many of you know a pastor needs peace? So he goes to classic FM. So uh, it's, a, it's a narrow bandwidth. It's a narrow bandwidth. With God, by the way, it's a narrow bandwidth. It's a narrow, it's a fine tuning to be able to hear the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. Why doesn't God have a big voice? Because He wants us to put the effort in to lean in so that we can tune in, so that we're so focused, so if you're like, no, stop talking. I'm trying to hear what this person's saying. You have to drown out all the other voices so you can hear the main voice. And that's why God's done it that way. He, he, he doesn't make it so simple that as soon as we just try to get a hold of God, He's immediately just so, so present. No, it requires us putting in some effort to tune our ear, to incline our heart toward the Lord. It's like a woman. No woman wants to be picked up very easily. Unless you're a certain kind of woman. You want to make it hard. You play hard to get. Because you are valuable. You are worth pursuing. And if He will not pursue you in the beginning, He will definitely not pursue you in the end. And you know this. So you don't want to be cheap and easy. You want to play classy and hard to get. Let me tell you, God plays hard to get. Not hard to get from a salvation point of view, but hard to get from a place of genuine intimacy. And so it requires intentionality and effort. Come on, say effort. You have to apply your heart. You have to apply yourself. Is there grace to apply yourself? Definitely there is grace. Is there grace to incline your ear and your heart to the Lord? Absolutely there is. But it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen. No, we have to be intentional. You know, when I think about scriptures that say, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Those are wonderful promises, but you'll find that the scripture didn't say, I've drawn near to you. Therefore, you can draw near to me. No, it's actually God did the initial in, uh, uh, act of stepping to us in Christ. And He loved us before we ever loved Him. And He saved us while we were yet sinners. Amen. God took the initiative while we were yet dead in our, sin, our sins and our trespasses. And in our waywardness, the Lord intervened for us. And now the Lord is saying, it's your turn to take 
initiative with me. That's why the scripture says, draw near to God, and then he will draw near to you. Now, God is already near because he's Emmanuel, God with us, right? But the manifest presence of God, that sense of his nearness, of his presence, of his glory, of the weightiness of God around your life. You know what I'm talking about. You know when you can feel it. You know when you can sense it. You know when it just, God is there in every decision. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God wants us to do. And that's why at the beginning of the year, we do something called Seek Week. The Lord wants us to seek Him. That's why we get scriptures like, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all the things you're worried about, that you're pursuing, that you want in your life, they will automatically get added unto you as a byproduct of seeking the Lord first. Instead of seeking the things of, of God, we seek the face of God. Instead of just seeking the promises of God, we seek the promiser who is God. And this is what the Lord is after all of us for. And I know, I know how easy it is to get carnal. How easy it is just to become natural. How easy it is to not be in tune anymore, be, hear a, 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 a sketchy voice, not wandering in and out of, of, of being tuned in with God. I know how easy it is to begin to listen to other voices, to begin to feel the weight of, 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 of the world and the, and, the, and the pressures of life. And that's why it requires intentionality to continually remain in tune, to seek Him. The Bible promises us that seek and you will find. It doesn't say seek once. If you read the Amplified, that word seek is a continual thing. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and, come on, keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking. Hallelujah. The door will be opened. You will seek and you will find. Hallelujah. So I know for you and for me, the answer is that we have to be continuous and we have to be intentional. I love the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. It says, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Watch all your soul. All your soul, all your mind, all your will, all your emotions. The Lord is saying, if you will seek me, I promise you, you will find me. And that's what the Lord wants of us this morning is to take our year and say, Lord, without you, I can't do 2019. Without hearing what it is that you want to do, I can't accomplish your purpose for my life. Because without you, I can do nothing. That's a good place to be. It's good to be intimidated in your humanity by the magnitude of 2019. So you fall upon the grace of God and begin to rely upon His divinity rather than your own humanity. Four keys, I believe, in seeking the Lord. Important keys that I want us as a church to employ together over this next week, from Monday through to Sunday, uh, we're going to fast, we're going to pray, hallelujah, we're going to read the word, hallelujah, we're going to worship, hallelujah, we're going to be intentional, we're going to take the dial of the Holy Ghost, and we're going to tune in to the God channel and what He has to say for 2019, amen. You know, uh, many people... Uh, when it comes to fasting, don't really understand what that means. They've maybe uh, heard other people. They've tried it at different times in their lives. And, uh, and that's some funny ideas about fasting. I don't know about you, but I, I've, I say, so I've asked people before, so what do you think uh, fasting is all about? And some of the answers I get are absolutely shocking. Some of them are trying to be Mahatma Gandhi 
Do you know who Mahatma Gandhi was? Okay, he was he he would do something called hunger strikes. A hunger strike is not fasting. You know what a hunger strike does? It's a tool of manipulation to get someone else to change their mind about something because if they don't, you're going to die of starvation. Now, fasting is not a tool for manipulation with the Lord. God does not negotiate with terrorists. Hallelujah. Fasting is not to align God with your agenda, hallelujah, it's to align your agenda with God's. You know what? God wants us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. God wants us to come to a place where we are so hungry for Him that we have to be satiated, where we become desperate for the Lord. So fasting, in its simplest, simplest term, is to abstain from eating food for the purpose of seeking God. Some of the greatest and most pivotal points in my life's journey have come from moments either during or soon after a time of fasting where life has crowded in often to a point where I can no longer assume anything. Have you ever been in a situation like this? You can't afford to assume a thing. You can't afford to get it wrong. You can't afford to miss God. You can't afford to just kind of bumble through it. No, you know deep down in your heart that if you don't hear from God in this moment, it's a destiny shaping decision that will affect your life forever. Come on, how many of you are in a situation possibly like that right now? Put your hand up. Come on. Where you're saying, God, I, if I get this wrong, I'm really, I've, I've messed up. Well, then I want to encourage you to listen with both ears this morning. Because fasting is a way to get us to be so in tune with the voice of the Holy Spirit. So fasting, besides abstaining from food, what does it do when you abstain from food for the purpose of seeking God? I'll tell you what fasting does. Fasting enables the putting down of fleshly appetites and causes the spirit man to take ascendancy over the soul and the body. You are a spirit who has a soul who lives in a body. Come on, say this. I am a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. Spirit man is to take ascendancy and to rule your mind, your will, and your emotions. When we become fleshly or carnal believers, it flips over like that, and the soul rules the spirit. When it gets real bad... The body and the soul rule the spirit. And then you are like a man or a city that has no walls, and you will let anything in and anything out. That is not the way God created any one of us, and God wants us to take ascendancy or dominion or control over the realm of our soul and our body. We cannot do that by exerting willpower. Willpower will get you a certain result, but it will not last. Because you cannot do anything for a long time without becoming fatigued in the realm of your soul. Even if it seems easy. Uh, get your cell phone with me right now. Take your cell phone out of wherever it is. And I want you to do something really easy, okay? I want you, imagine your cell phone is the power of your will. I want you to lift it up like this for me. And just hold it up there. Hallelujah. It's only a few uh, ounces, your phone. It's not even a kg. Maybe if you have a phone from 1992, it would feel like a brick. But this is not the case. This is a lightweight thing. And this is what the world tells you. You can do it. You can do it. You can lose those kgs. You can, you can get a promotion. If you'll just read 10 books a day, you'll be fine. And we lured into the sense of ease because it seems so easy, but 
Are you starting to feel the burn? Are you starting to feel the burn right now in your shoulder? Yeah, you can put it down. You're like, oh man, that's my workout for the week. Thanks, Pastor James. Well, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that anything that's done for a long period of time becomes hard. And that's why the Lord is the only one that can sustain us through the power of our spirit man. The Bible says that the outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. So where's the real power? The real power is where the Spirit of God dwells. The Spirit of God does not dwell in your, in your, in your soul. He dwells within your spirit. And your spirit is enlivened by the presence of God, by the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus out of the grave. Your spirit man has the power to rule over your soul and to inspire your soul toward godliness and create godly appetites within your soul so your soul no longer has appetites that lead you into a wayward place. That's why it's very important that we feed our spirit, that we commune with God in our spirit, because your spirit is where your true power is. That's where your true power lies. What does fasting do? It, it, it says no to the carnal. It says no to the flesh. And it says, I'm the boss as the spirit. I'm the boss and soul. I will rule you. This is what David says. He says, why art thou downcast, O my soul? What part of him is speaking at this point? His spirit man is taking ascendancy over his soul, and he is putting his soul in its place. Have you ever had to put somebody in their place? When they're running in your lane? When they have no business running in your lane? And you say, this is my lane. It's not your lane. You need to go into your lane. God bless you. Get out of my lane. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do as three-part beings. Our soul, spirit man has to rise up and put the soul in its place. Soul is a great follower, but a terrible leader. So fasting enables the putting down of the fleshly appetites and causes the spirit man to take ascendancy over the soul and the body. Fasting also increases your spiritual authority. Where do you get that from, Pastor? Well, I remember Jesus saying this very thing. How many of you remember when Jesus sent out the 70 disciples to cast out evil spirits, to pray for the sick, uh, to cleanse lepers? Hallelujah. And they, 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 they came back to him and they said, Oh, Lord, even the demons obey us. He said, don't rejoice in that. Rather rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. And then he goes on to say, because there were two guys that came back, or several of his disciples saying, but Lord, we tried to cast out the demon and it wouldn't leave. And he says, oh, you of little faith. And he tells them why. What does he say? This kind come out only by prayer and fasting. So what does fasting do? Fasting gives you authority, not only in the realm of your own soul, but in the realm of the spirit world. Some people, I've, it's been kind of weird because I've heard a lot of different people over the last few months saying, in the realm of their sleep, they really, really battle because they get harassed at night in their sleep. Some people even here this morning are shocked that I'm talking about this because even last night you were scared to go to sleep because of what happens to you when you sleep. And I say to you, all it will take is fasting and prayer and you will be delivered from the harassment of the enemy because you will have the authority to put him in his place in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a proper amen? amen? Fasting produces an increased sensitivity to discern the will of God and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in various situations to aid us in making godly choices. You become sensitized, not desensitized. I tell you what, 
Hollywood is doing a masterful job at desensitizing a generation. I mean, they are so intentional. They are so intentional with the things they show, with the way they immerse a generation into desensitizing over even areas of what is right and what is wrong. Uh, Morality is becoming something that's been thrown out completely, and anything goes now. Absolutely anything goes. Not to the point where it's just uh, like, okay, that's all right. No, it's celebrating anything goes. And uh, so there's the scripture in Romans chapter 12. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. The scripture starts off by saying, you know, that we are to give ourselves up to God as a living sacrifice. For this is your reasonable worship and service unto God. That there is a, a, a giving up of ourselves to present yourself, is what the scripture actually says. It says, present yourself to God. How do you pres- No one can present me to God. We're not Catholics here. We believe that Jesus is our high priest, and there is no other priest needed. Can I hear an amen? You cannot have someone stand proxy for you. That is who Jesus is to you before God the Father. Hallelujah. There is no greater priest. There is no saint you can pray to. There is no other person that you can go to. There is no other mediator than Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The greatest mediator of all. Read the book of Hebrews and be convinced uh, that Jesus is the only priest, the only high priest. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we as the children of God, when it comes to fasting, need to be convinced that it is powerful and necessary. Another thought about fasting is that we need to fast for the right reasons. Fasting as unto the Lord, not to manipulate the Lord, not to impress others, hallelujah, not to lose weight, not to get healthy, no, all of the, all these things will be added unto you. Amen. All this weight will be taken away from you. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what will happen? The Lord will give you the grace to be disciplined in certain areas where you found it impossible before. Whether you have health issues or whatever it is that you have, I'm trusting the Lord along for myself, for my wife, for my family, for you, that this is going to be a year, a healthy, healthy, healthy year in Jesus' name. Amen. Fasting is to be practiced by all new covenant believers. Jesus commissioned all believers to fast in Mark chapter 2, verse 20. So it's not something that I just kind of can choose whether I do or don't do. Fasting is to be a part of the believer's life. I believe this year the Lord's going to lead you not only into the seek week fasting moment, but the Lord is going to lead you into fasting for periods of time throughout the year as He brings you to certain points of choices and decisions and moments or times when you feel like, I'm just slipping, I'm not quite where I need to be in, 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 in a spiritual uh, 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 way. And so I'm going to really get a hold of God with fasting. Amen? You don't hear a lot of preaching on fasting. And you don't hear it because it is one of the greatest tools of the Lord against the enemy. It's one of the greatest tools we have to align ourselves with the things of God. Jesus is our supreme example. He also fasted. And the implication of Jesus' fast was to God's word instead of natural food. Fasting increased one's spiritual appetite and simultaneously decreases one's carnal natural appetite. Two things happen with appetite. Think about Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights. 
This is before he starts his, his ministry. He goes up into the wilderness after he's been baptized. He's 30 years old. He's got three years of miracles and, and preaching to do before he's crucified. And so at 30 years of old, he goes into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasts. And what is the first temptation that comes to him? Turn these stones into bread. And what was the response of the Lord? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, he, what he was saying in a common way today is, I have food that is more important than natural food. It's my spiritual food that will enable me to control every other appetite in my life. All other appetites get put in their right place, hallelujah, when your spirit man leads because it's sustained by the Word of God and by fasting. So a few more thoughts on fasting. Fasting that is biblically sound is for spiritual reasons and is therefore to be accompanied with focused prayer and the reading of God's Word. To fast and not pray is to simply just not eat. You're just not eating. You're going to miss it. Some of you say, I fasted before, nothing ever happens. Well, why don't you do this? How much time do you spend eating breakfast? How much time do you spend eating lunch? How much time do you spend eating dinner? And instead of just substituting that time by not eating, add, hallelujah, prayer and the Word of God to those moments and see how the Lord will turn your fasting from not eating to a spiritual alignment. You cannot fast without prayer. You might as well not do it. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Prayer and fasting, that's how you always see it. Prayer and fasting, not just fasting, prayer and fasting are essential for us to be able to really get the most out of fasting. There are different types of fasts. There is the fast that is a full fast, which is water only. Um, and that's the fast that Jesus would have done. Some say Jesus also fasted water. Uh, but I don't think anyone can know fully. You have to ask Jesus when you get to heaven on that one. Hallelujah. Uh, so a full fast is water only. Partial fast is no food from sunup to sundown. A Daniel fast, and everyone like, this is the one I'm going to do. Hallelujah. No meat, no sweets, and bread only. Uh, I mean, only water, juice, fruits, and vegetables. So there's no bread, there's no meat, and there's no sweets. Hallelujah. <laughs> Media fast. This is a 21st century kind of fast. We had to add it in there because I don't know about you, but there's times to really switch off the voice of this world. Don't watch TV. I'm saying for a week, somebody like, I can't do that, Pastor. I can't do that. Well, as you fast and pray, you'll be amazed at what you can say no to. If you'll shut off your TV, if you'll shut off social media, hallelujah, I dare you to delete the app from your phone for a week. Some of you, that's the only way you're going to, some of you, the first thing you do, let's be honest, how many of you, the first thing you do when you wake up and roll over What's the first thing you do on your phone? You hit the blue and white icon, right? You need a break from that. God wants to speak to you more than Facebook. Hallelujah. More than Instagram. More than whatever it is, WhatsApp. Just begin to say no to those things so you can say yes to the Holy Spirit and what He wants to do. Hallelujah. So I'm getting real practical with you. Prayer is so simple. I'm not going to go into depth. It's just talking.
to Jesus. Just talk to Jesus. Lift up the things that are in your heart. Lift up the things that you want to see this year. Allow the Lord to speak back to you as you read His Word. You'll be amazed. The Lord wants to speak back. And He wants to inform you of some stuff. He wants to build you up. He wants to encourage you. And the fourth thing that I add, besides, come on, fasting, prayer, the Word of God, the fourth thing I want to add in there is fill your car and your home with Holy Ghost worship. I'm talking about worship music that blesses your spirit so much that you have to stop what you're doing and just go, man, that's good. Man, that's good. You see, worship isn't just music. Worship is the presence of God invading your soul in such a powerful way that you begin to fall in love with Him all over again. Can we stand this morning as we trust the Lord? Seek week as we start on Monday, go all the way through to Sunday. We'll be breaking our fast with communion uh, on Sunday. So come ready, come hungry for your <laughs> communion wafer and your hallelujah, uh, 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 grape juice, hallelujah. God, I'm believing this week is going to align you. You know, some of you, have you ever had your back out of joint before? And it's really sore even to the point where you can't turn your neck, you can't turn your head, and if you breathe in too deeply, it hurts, and you, you can't sit down properly. But the amazing thing is if you get aligned by the chiropractor, you're able to get all your movement back and pain begins to subside and you feel like a new person that's what the lord is going to do with you he's going to be the holy ghost chiropractor that is going to align you for this year are you ready church can we pray and ask the lord to grace us for seek week say this with me jesus i'm setting aside this coming week to seek you with fasting, with prayer, with your word, with worship. And I'm asking you to enable me, to empower me to do this. I need you. I need to be aligned. I need to be attuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, do a deep work in my life in the mighty name of Jesus just bow your head and close your eyes there are people here even today this morning that are not right with God and deep down in your heart you know you're not right with God you don't even know what would happen to you if you were to die there's the sense of fear of death because you don't even know if you would go to heaven my friend right now I don't want you to wait another minute, another hour, another day, another service. But today is your day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is your moment. This is your time to get right with God. He wants to forgive you of all your sins. He wants to give you a brand new life. He wants to do a brand new thing in you today. If that's you this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I need to get right with God today. Very quickly, I want you to slip your hand up across this auditorium. Lift your hand right now if you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I need to get right with God today. Come on, lift your hand so I can pray for you this morning. Is there anyone? I see your hand over there, ma'am. God bless you. Is there anyone else saying, Pastor, I'm that person? I see your hand over there, ma'am. God bless you. We're going to pray for you right now. I just want you to be really bold and to come and step out of the place where you're standing. Come meet me at the front. Let's thank God. Ladies, come right now. These two ladies coming up front. Come on, let's thank God for that. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you came to church today. Church, would you extend your hands to these that have come forward this morning? Let's pray this prayer out loud together. Repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, today is my day 
for salvation. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again on the third day for my sins to be forgiven. And Jesus, I receive you now as my Savior, as my Lord. I invite the Holy Spirit to now live inside of me. I'm now a child of God, completely forgiven, and I'm saved in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, thank God this morning for that.